Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside me today. Today we're taking a look at Hisea's Apollo Hunting Boot. For those of you that follow the channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Hisea boots. I think they offer a very quality rubber neoprene style boot at a much more budget friendly price. And I think they blow away all the other competitors in terms of their quality and durability of build compared to the price point. Now I have reviews on other boots from other companies on my channel as well. But last year Hisea reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in trying trying our boots, no string attached, no money changed hands. Would you be interested in trying our boots and giving an honest review? So we are going to be taking a look at these boots today and comparing them to their boot style of the past. Before we do, real quick, if you're not interested in the unboxing and quick overview, follow the time tags down at the bottom of the video or in the description to go to a part of this hopefully season long review that you're most interested in. But first, before we get to the new, let's talk about the old, which would have been the original style boot that I'd started using back in the fall of 2020. So here is the original Heisei boot. I'm a fan of solid colors. I got black for the new ones, and these are obviously the dark brown. This model is not made anymore, and you can see some of the things that I had qualms with were the very bell shape to it. It flopped around a lot on your leg, but it was really easy to get on and off, and as you can see, as it's still covered in grass, dirt, and grime, that I still use these boots almost every other day, if not every day, and they see a ton of wear and tear as as I just go on hikes with the kids, do yard work, and just general mucking around the house. All the seams had stayed perfectly glued, none of the rubber is cracking, nothing has delaminated from itself. I've got a lot of kicks and scuff marks on all these boots. They've seen a lot of hunting miles and they've seen a lot of deer hunts and a lot of successful ones at that. Hisea offers both insulated and uninsulated. I like to keep my boots as light as possible. I always used to run around with 800,000 gram boots, very heavy on my feet. It really wears you down in a hurry. So I like uninsulated ones, which is what these older models and the new ones that I have. I will then use Arctic Shield boot covers once I'm actually on stand, and I will link those down in the description below as I see a lot of cold weather here in the mountains of Pennsylvania. So let's be out with the old and in with the final unboxing of the new. All right, so we'll go ahead and get these open here. I say it always throws in one of these things you use for like kayaking and whatnot, like a little dry bag for your phone. You can sometimes get the touch screen through it to work, but I just kind of put it to the side. And here we have, we'll just do one boot. There's no sense in breaking out both. So some pretty obvious comparisons right off the bat. We have a little bit of a height difference, taller with the new model, which was one of the complaints I had with the original. We've lost this fr uh, front rubber reinforcement. We've moved the logo to the front instead of on the side. The original model had a back kick plate so you could use your foot to slide the boot on and off. Although this boot rode more like a sneaker than a rubber neoprene style boot. This one is smooth on the back. Both are still very grippy. That was one of my original thoughts with this boot. It's that it's not a very hard rubber like some other boot manufacturers. It's much softer and it conforms to your foot and it doesn't get as hard as quickly in cold weather This fresh out hasn't been broken in. It is definitely very soft This one has stiffened up a little bit over time, but still not nearly as stiff as some other manufacturers Very obvious difference right here on the back We do have a cinch strap which you would see on a lot of other boot manufacturers I think this is going to come in really handy as I have really thin calves And it'll be really allow me to tighten that up and reduce some of that slot from it flopping around the seams are glued very well Just like the original the uh, neoprene on the Apollo is about the same thickness as the uninsulated on the other side here this was a fleece line boot however going up through the shank and this is just neoprene if there is a fleece it's a very small micro suede but it just basically feels like neoprene which is okay that fleece would allow it to get pretty daggum hot in the turkey season or if it's warm enough in the early season when I'm standing in the tree with a bow the last thing for the unboxing here and this was true of the old style boot as well has a tag for Hisea's lifetime warranty now I haven't had any warranty issues with this boot obviously I'd be very interested to see how it pans out if this boot does fall apart on me if I reached out to Isaiah that's pretty impressive not very many boot companies offer any type of full warranty and particularly a lifetime warranty I imagine if a glue seam started to come undone I could contact them and either get the boot repaired or replaced at least that's my hope we'll find out as we go throughout the season all right so it's time to actually get out of the basement get into the woods and actually put these boots through its paces over the next couple of weeks as we start the Pennsylvania archery season. 
All right, now through the power of editing, welcome to the month of November. We have put a lot of time into these Hisea boots since you saw them at the beginning of the season, but now we've also added the Pro 400 gram insulated models as well, which you see are full rubber all the way up. I want to add these into it because these have been a very nice boot for me as well, and I actually consider these to be worth the $20 to $30 upgrade over the basic hunting boot. Nothing wrong with these boots, but I would like to share some of the... Um, the comparisons, the obvious ones, as well as some of the experience, the user wear and tear experience that I've been having as I've been comparing and contrasting these boots throughout the archery season. First things first, I haven't had any mechanical failures whatsoever with either one of these boots. These ones in particular you can see are quite dirty, have seen a lot of use, and these ones even have a little bit of blood on them as I was able to take these to the state of Indiana and harvest my biggest buck to date while wearing these boots. I will link that video if it's already shared down in the description below of this video. Now. To continue on, let's go back to what I've been using, which are the basic hunting boot that we started this video off with. Some of the things that I enjoy about these boots that are a little bit better on this one in the pro hunting style. The back clasp I talked about at the beginning of the video works really well. However, it is nice to cinch up the calf region. However, is that this clasp system, it just kind of folds over and holds it with a little bit of friction. There's not really like a good clicking lock over and then also the tag in sits out this way meaning if you don't have enough tag in to fold this back and keep it inside the strap keeper like I'm doing right now if you don't have the ability to do that with it flopping around it doesn't take much for it to just pop that and then it's loose and it's flopping around again on the pro side however it has an actual like I don't know an audible click over right you can listen to it right? It's an actual audible click over. And then the strap faces back, right? So this actually makes more sense for it to go inside the strap keeper. It's almost like this one is routed backwards, or at least like it should have gone the opposite direction some way or some sort. I do appreciate that on the pro version. And it's much more rigid. You can even hear it as it actually has to pop itself back open. I like this model a little bit more. Now, in terms of comfort and user experience in that way, no issues here. This definitely has that more loose feel, kind of like that rain boot, that galoshes style rain boot. Has the nice soft neoprene, no issues here. However, it is a little bit on the loose side. And because I'm here in Pennsylvania and I deal with a lot of topography, I would kind of get that foot slippage on the inside of the basic uh, hunting boot. The pro version, it actually has, you can probably see the swelling or rather the, the uh, indents, you notice it's much more of a straight shank here as it goes around the top of the ankle. Here it actually indents in and it cups your ankle and it makes the boot feel more like a sneaker. Now that was a huge bonus for me. I didn't understand that was going to be part of the purchasing of this boot, but that is exactly how it's built. It's built with this, uh, this swaging almost and it conforms to your ankle. Now I have really thin legs, so that really works out well for me. But if you have a thicker leg, maybe a little bit, a little bit too tight, I quite like it and I think it's well worth the upgrade. Now, when it comes to talking about the insulation, I think it could be either a pro or a con. The obvious con right now is you see the size difference and there is a significant weight difference. I'm not gonna weigh them again, but there's a significant weight difference between these two boots. You can see the actual size difference in terms of the amount of foot space. And I'm a saddle hunter, right? I use the tethered Predator platform. So it's a tiny platform. This is already a size 12 boot for both these boots. That's already pretty big. Now it does fit with this one, but if I wanna throw the Arctic Shield boot covers over top, of that which i commonly do when the weather really starts getting cold i'm really going to run on a platform space in a hurry now i use it like i said in indiana even with the arctic shield boot covers and it wasn't a huge problem and particularly if you use a large tree stand or a larger saddle hunting platform it's not going to be an issue whatsoever you'll have a lot more room than i traditionally do and in particularly if you have a smaller foot say like a nine or a ten to further along with the rigidity standpoint there is a full rubber as you see here on the outside of this boot that goes all the way up the shank and that really gives this a much stiffer boot feel now i don't know what it's going to be like when it gets super cold outside we start pushing the teens and single digits here in the northeast if this is going to really stiffen up become really cold and really hard and uh, not very flexible whereas this one being neoprene all the way up has a lot of flex to it this can be really nice and particularly in the early season during turkey season when i'm dealing with temperatures maybe as low as the 40s but predominantly in the 50s 60s and 70s 
Continuing on and going on to the tread, both of these boots have quite an aggressive tread. However, I do like the aggressive tread more of the basic boot. It's much more jagged and much more chunky. It doesn't have any waffle grid to it. I never had an issue with debris getting stuck in here and making the boot even heavier as I go through muck and mud and what you would expect to take a neoprene rubber style boot through. Nothing wrong with the pros in that regard. And again, boot tread's just boot tread. But again, I also spend a lot of time on tree stands. And so this aggressive tread really allows me to get around the edges of my uh, tree stand or saddle hunting platform and really gives me a good feel. This one I lose a little bit of feel because it has that extra insulation in there. It's a little bit stiffer on the bottom, but it's kind of a give and take. I think it's worth it having a little bit extra insulation, but it's also worth it having that extra feel on the bottom. So it's whatever works for you. So in terms of the waterproofing, I've had zero issues with either one of these boots, the basic or the pro. The pro I did use, like I said, in Indiana, and I had to walk through 8 to 12 inches of standing water each and every single hunt. Had zero issues with that. I'm talking like 50 to 60 yards of standing water, like I'd be crossing a large creek. Same thing here. I have a lot of creeks and other type of bodies of water that I do have to cross in, not to mention the general mud puddles and everything else. And I've had zero issues with either boot, keeping me dry and warm. So with all the positives of these boots, were there really any negatives that I experienced? Well, outside of the back class here on the basic boot, the Pro didn't really have anything other than the insole. And this is something you're going to have to get used to. The Pro insole actually has like bumps and ridges, kind of like a Dr. Scholl's type of gel type insole. And it took my feet some time to get kind of them broken in. They're pretty stiff to begin with. Also, and this is not just problems with Hisaia, but I've had it with every other rubber neoprene style boot that I've had in the past, the insoles easily slip out and so I do not want it because of all the topography going up and down hills that insole will tend to work its way back and back and back and fold up the back side of the boot surround your heel and it, you lose that grip in the toe portion of the boot the easiest way to rectify that is just pull that in, uh, insole out right in before you start using the boot and use a little bit of fabric glue you could try double-sided tape but I find that just isn't uh, good for the long run. Use yourself some thick style fabric glue. I'll link something in the description below that I've used on all my insoles for sneakers and leather boots and rubber boots, of course, and keeping that insole down and glued in. Just put it in, let it dry for a couple of hours, and you're good to go. No more slippage and no more uncomfortable walks in and out of the woods. So all in all, I don't think you can go wrong with either style, the basic hunting or the Pro Hunter with a little bit of insulation. I enjoy both for each of their qualities. I think this is going to be a great early season and turkey season boot when I don't need that insulation and I don't mind that little bit of extra slop to allow it to breathe around my foot. When it gets colder outside though, I feel like this pro is going to be on my feet most often and particularly if I'm going to be dealing with snow and all the other general muck and wear and tear going through briars and like in the gun season when I'm doing deer drives and that type of stuff, this extra rubber that runs up the shank that isn't on the basic boot is going to keep this a little bit less torn up and a little bit more durable over the long haul. And quite frankly, compared to a lot of the other companies that are sell rubber neoprene style boots, you could buy both of these for almost the cost of one, if not actually the cost of one of those other companies' boot style. And Hisea does have their lifetime warranty. They've been durable enough for me. I haven't had to fulfill that yet. So I think it's actually worth it in the long run. If you want to get both sets, you can even get their rain boots or their uh, mucking gardening styling boots that are more like a mid-calf style. My wife has a pair of those and they've worked really well for her. So if you're interested in purchasing a pair of Hisea boots for yourself, follow the links in the description below. There might even be a promo discount code down there for those of you that are watching this video. You can save yourself some even extra coin. I think really do get yourself a pair of quality neoprene rubber style boot. Again, I really enjoy this. I get asked all the time, you know, what kind of boots do you hunt in? Leather, lace up, this sort? Nah, it's this. Neoprene rubber style boots for me, for turkey season, early season, late season, all the snow, all the muck, all the water that I have to go through here in the Northeast on a regular basis. This style of boot is well worth it. Throw on some Arctic Shield boot covers and you can really handle yourself well down into the single digits. I really think something like this is worth the try and worth the purchase. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions on my footwear choices, whether it be Hisea or anything else, please do follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook and Instagram. Send me an email, averagedeckarchery at gmail.com or you can drop a comment on this or any of my other videos here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside and Enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation. Keep your feet warm and dry while you're out there. And we'll get to see you next time.